All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are back, and uh, thank you for staying with us on this Friday. Um, we have a, a new poll out at Newsmax.com, and it relates to what we we've been bringing you all afternoon here at Newsmax Television, and uh, that's guns and uh, gun control. And the question is, what do you think of President Obama's call for gun and ammunition controls? Well, we want to hear from you, so vote in our Newsmax poll. Do it at Newsmax.com slash guns. That's Newsmax.com slash guns guns. Now we have heard some really impassioned speeches from Jeb Bush, Ben Carson, Rick Santora, Mike Huckabee, uh, and uh, just most recently Lindsey Graham, who is uh, finishing up his speech. Uh, we believe we still have uh, Donald Trump uh, and possibly uh, Ted Cruz to hear from. We'll try to squeeze him in in this half hour. Um, I believe that Lindsey Graham is uh, just finishing, so as soon as he um, leaves the stage and uh, someone else uh, uh, comes on to speak, we will bring it to you. Got to say, you know, Lindsey Graham said in his speech there, if you noticed, uh, he said a lot of us are thinking of running for president. He has talked about that. He's mentioned it again in a very important forum. I think that's something we should keep in mind. Uh, we've heard others that believe, uh, you know, that uh, this is a good forum to talk about that too. Here is Donald Trump, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Chris. Great honor to be here. I love the NRA. I love the Second Amendment, so you have to know that. And it's really something, having a room like this and having so many great Americans, great taxpayers, wonderful people, and hard workers. I want to go ahead. You can go ahead. So I'd like to introduce, you know, they were standing with me, they, they love this group, they love the people, and they love the NRA more than anyone I know. They happen to be my sons, they're lifetime members. They were standing outside, I said, I'm going to introduce you. They know more about rifles, they know more about shooting, they know more about hunting. So I'm going to ask Eric Trump, Don Trump, and Don's wife, Vanessa, come on up here for a second. Come here. What do you think? Everything good? Just great to be here. These are our people. These are the things we do on the weekends in our free time. We're shooters, we're hunters, we're outdoorsmen, we're sportsmen, and we love the Second Amendment. So thank you all for having us thank here. You. We look forward to being here all weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Eric. Thanks, Vanessa. Thank you. I promise you one thing. If I run for president, and if I win, the Second Amendment will be totally protected. That I can tell you. With that said, our country is in serious, serious trouble. We have a president who, in my opinion, is incompetent, doesn't know what he's doing. We have negotiators who truly have no clue. You look at what's going on in this crazy deal. I wrote The Art of the Deal. They should read it because the, the deals that they make, you look at what's happening with Iran, you look at the tremendously horrible, it's inconceivable deal that's being made. It's going to make Iran a nuclear power. You're going to have proliferation all over the place. Everybody's going to want it to protect themselves. It's going to make Iran rich. And you look at what's happening where they go into Yemen, they go into all sorts of places. And by the way, if you remember, because I've spoken to many of you before, for years I've been saying, and I've been saying it loud and clear, that Iran is going to take over Iraq. And that's what happened. As sure as you're sitting there, they're now taking over Iraq. And then I said, hey, for years, Keep the oil. And people said, oh, that, wa that was not nice. You know who has the oil now? ISIS has the oil. Because we have people that truly don't know what they're doing. We need a new president. We need new leadership. We need strength. We need people that are respected. Putin has no respect for our president. ISIS has no respect. And do you ever notice it's never ISIS, it's ISIL. The only one that says ISIL is Obama. It's the only one. He talks about ISIL. Everyone else says ISIS. He's got a little reason because a little part of region. But he's the only one. Just not a good person. And perhaps, go ahead, you can hear it if you believe it. I don't know if he has the interest of the country. 
He probably does. But as I said, I think the whole group, led by the leader, led by the leader, is grossly, grossly incompetent. And there's nothing you can do about it. We have to take our country back. We have to negotiate properly with China, who's manipulating their currency to a level that they've never done before. They're taking our jobs, they're manufacturing our goods, and not only China. You look at what's happening with Mexico, the border is a sieve. They're sending everybody right through the border, and we're taking pictures and watching them. And it should never be allowed to happen. It's not what the country is all about. Everybody's coming in illegally, millions of people coming in illegally. We've got to stop it at the border, and we have to stop it fast. So people don't understand with Mexico, not our friend, what they're doing to us, not only at the border, but what they're doing to us economically. They're becoming the car capital of the world. And in Tennessee, a place we love, in Tennessee, they just took a billion dollar plant that everybody thought was coming here, and it's going to Mexico. And they're going to make those cars and employ their people, not our people, and they're going to sell them to the United States tax-free, and we sit back and let it happen. Terrible. Japan, again, they're at it. They're manipulating their currency. They're driving it down. And a friend of mine who's an amazing guy, he's a, an excavator, a big, big company, he excavates, that's what he does. That's how he makes his money. And he always buys Caterpillar tractors. Because of the fact that Japan has manipulated their currency so low, he calls me the other day and he says, Donald, I, I feel bad. Why? I've just bought a huge order and placed a huge order for Komatsu tractors. I said, why? He said, because Japan has manipulated their currency to such a point, and they've driven it down so low, that Caterpillar can't compete. And I said, you know, I want to think about that, because that is a big statement. This is a man never bought anything but American, never bought anything, frankly, but Caterpillar. And that's where he is. Well, that's what's happening to our country. Our country is in serious, serious trouble. Other people are taking our jobs. We can turn it around so fast. We have all the cards. We have, people don't realize it. Our negotiators don't realize it. When the negotiator from Iran goes back to Iran, they're dancing in the streets and celebrating. Then the boss says, what's Obama talking about? None of those things ever, none of those things were determined at the negotiation. We won all those points, he's lying. This is some position that we're in because we have people that don't get it. We have people that don't have, literally do not have a clue. So what we need now are tough, smart people to bring our jobs back, to bring manufacturing back, to make sure that ISIS is not going to exist very much longer. And I can tell you this, if I run, and people are going to be very surprised, and if I win, America will be great again. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's great.